Uh, now. Well, you have been texting in on this. Stacey says the trouble with the church is they are so desperate for people to join, they don't care who they have just to bump up their numbers. That uh, makes it sound like you pay membership to be a part of it. Pam adds, of course, it's deliberate. The only other explanation would be dangerous naivety beyond madness. Uh, and Chris says, no, they are only interested in, in, in increasing their flock. Yeah, what, from about five to ten? Uh, and the financial benefits that come with that, yeah, big deal. And Andrew writes, the Church of England has blood on its hands for encouraging Abdul Ezadi to convert to Christianity and to stay in the UK. Uh, well, let's continue, uh, as I say, this very heated discussion by bringing in Pastor Graham Nichols uh, from Christ Church in Haywood. Heath, which I believe is in Sussex. Uh, thanks for joining us, Graham. Uh, where do you stand on this? Uh, we have a disagreement on our hands here, but uh, I agree with Alex. Yeah, we should throw as many grenades as we can at former Home Secretaries who are trying to blame other people for their failure to control the migrant crisis. But I think church leaders are complicit in this. They are converting asylum seekers to Christianity on an industrial scale. They know what they're doing. Uh, this is what's going on, isn't it? It's political. I don't think it's political. I um, uh, I don't know whether it's good or bad, but I do agree with Alex mostly on this particular point. <laughs> so so you can shout thing. at me now as well. It's a wrong um, thing, but there you but, go. <laughs> but I just don't see that across the church, and particularly independent churches, not, not necessarily aligned to the Church of England, are, are doing this in a malevolent way or in a politically motivated way. I, I think it's unwise, a lot of the statements uh, Justin Welby has made and others, which have a clear political bent to it. But I don't think, generally speaking, that's what ordinary jobbing church leaders are actually thinking. They're not driven politically. I also don't think they're driven financially or kind of selfishly to say, we just want to increase our flock. It's really hard when someone comes, they may not be an asylum seeker, they may be someone else who comes in and shows an interest. There could be all kinds of reasons. So I don't think it's really the church's job to work out about asylum seeking. It's our job to tell people about Jesus. And if they seem to believe it and they want to learn more about it, we'll keep encouraging them to do that. And if, and, he we'll comes in, and if Jesus comes in handy on their application for asylum, hey, we, go for we it. Can't, eh? yeah, we can't counter that. The, the question is not, are we doing things in good faith? That's the question. If we're doing I them... Think, I don't think these no... church leaders are, Graham. Why I don't think they, they are. Be? There's 300 yeah. people yeah. on the Bibby Stockholm. 40 of them are currently converting to Christianity. How about yeah, that? Just coincidence? I, I, I don't know that those uh, 40 or whoever are being validated by church leaders or anything well, of else. Of course they are. Um, and it's, the, the system is at fault, if anything. Wouldn't you say that's fault. disproportionate? No, let, let, let Graeme talk, because I think Graeme's making a very important point, which is the system and you, you is you agree fault. With. Unless the, yeah, no, because I'm sorry, the onus <laughs> I, shouldn't I, be on somebody who is there to share the word of God, to make an assessment whether or not they should, could, or should exclude people from we, that. We, we, we do make decisions about whether we should baptise someone in our case, because we, we do believe as baptism not not baby baptism uh so we've got to make a decision about that but we do those things in good faith of course we're hopefully sensible reasonable people who if um you know a whole stream of asylum seekers all directed by the by the same sort of um uh, agenda end up in in our churches we should see that as a bit of a red flag and think i'm not sure this is genuine but in the end we can't decide and particularly when it's when it's one by one there are good reasons why people should convert to Christianity, all kinds of good reasons, because it's true and because it's good. So, so we want people to convert to following Jesus Christ and we'll encourage that. And it's not up to us to decide whether they should stay in this country. Um, I'm certainly not politically motivated to want to encourage or discourage. That's a, that's a government decision and I support my government, whichever government it is, in, in making decisions you, about that. But you're aware, Graham, are you not, that uh, by helping these people convert to Christianity, you are helping their asylum applications? There's no doubt about right. that. And would you agree that out of 300 young men uh, from the age of about 25 to 35 uh, on the Bibby Stockholm, the fact that 40 are currently converting to Christianity is somewhat disproportionate? It sounds like disproportionate, but I don't know their hearts uh, and I don't know what they're actually thinking. But <laughs> Come on if now. I, I, I'm, I'm not the investigator, am I? I'm, no, I agree. I'm not the of government. Not. That is not I'm, I'm not the government. Scene. It's for the government to say this looks suspicious and for them to investigate it and in the end, they've got to make a decision about how genuine the, the, the conversion is and whether it's significant enough. But in the end, 
you know, we, we baptize people in good faith and people claim whether they're Muslims or Christians or Hindus or anything else on their own confession and profession. And uh, that, that's how that's how life works. And if the, the main thing is working out, are they genuinely in danger? Yeah. Um, and do they need to be asylum seekers for that reason? And that's for the government to do. I haven't got the expertise to do that. I think it's I a very, just... yeah. I think it's a very easy cop out for two home secretaries to point the finger of blame at someone else. And I think they get away with doing so because, frankly, it's quite difficult sometimes for Christians to come to a solid conclusion about what might Jesus have said if he was around today, given Islam came a long time after Christianity and the levels of mass migration we're seeing now were not things that were necessarily recorded biblically. Um, and I think it's pretty lazy and pretty irresponsible. Of two former home secretaries. I can't believe you want to completely exonerate the church in this. They're clearly complicit to some degree. There might There's be no the doubt about you it. You don't know that. No, I do be... know it. <laughs> Obviously. Know. There might be... 40 out of 300. Look, Come on. Look, no, OK, so go, These speak, go speak. Lawyers. Why don't you go speak to that particular reverend who's been doing those 40 yeah, that, conversions? That, no, no, look, look. Don't just cast quite blame clearly, across the entire church. Quite clearly, church. quite clearly. And if you want to, immigration, go into a church Immigration first. lawyers are telling these uh, applicants, these people are applying for asylum, if you convert to Christianity, it's going to help. Right, and that's that the immigration. Well the case, that's but... the immigration lawyers and the and the asylum seekers doing and gaming the system. Yeah, and, well, and, yeah, and, the, and the Church, church of England coming in to help. Obviously. Oh, you know that, do you? Go and speak yes, to the person. Clearly, oh. forty out of three hundred. Come on. Well, go speak to that particular big responsible for that particular parish then. Don't say the church. There's nothing worse. Honestly, it's about, I'm fed up with the way people just think it's a completely open season on attacking Christianity and no other religion can ever be spoken badly about. It uh, really gets on my wick. Uh, well, I attack all religions. I'm an equal opportunity attacker of religions, so there you go. And there might not be Church of England, of England well. there might be Presbyterians or yeah, exactly. Methodists. Well, yeah, no, that's yeah, your, or, any, right. or all sorts of religions. You don't, yeah. exactly, Methodist. you don't know. Hmm? You don't know. Nor do you. Well, no, what I do know is unless you go speak to the particular vicar who was converted in oh, those 40, I'm good answers, have you? Don't be ridiculous. What? So I should go down and talk to each of the vicars Yes, involved. if you want to be a proper so, journalist, go and find so out So it's your just an unusual yes. coincidence, is it, that 40 out of 300 young men... No, I don't think it is. I think that's a massive red flag. Exactly. Well, it's that's a massive Graham's red fault, flag is it? that conversion well, to Christianity is Sufi's being used to aid asylum right. applications, okay, obviously. We know that. We know that people are gaming well, the system. Well, then the church of England's got to do something about it. Anyway. Your texts have been coming in after we <laughs> asked, are the church leaders who help asylum seekers convert to Christianity politically motivated? John says, I'm a registered member of the Church of England. Will you please tell Archbishop Welby that letting illegal migrants into Britain does not make him a saint? I agree. Amanda writes, church leaders are just being church leaders. It is their business to find and see the best in everyone. We are being taken for fools and laughed at by people who hate us. And Jackie says, with the Church of England having billions in assets, why don't we send them the bill if they assist in manipulating the system? And you've been calling in uh, on the phone as well. Uh, and uh, very pleased to welcome to the show, uh, to this uh, spirited debate, uh, <laughs> Spir Tom. Cross-talk cross, cross <laughs> yeah, like yeah. this, isn't it? Not uh, cross-talk, we're uh, cross-talk yeah, today. Yeah, <laughs> to cross-talk, cross yeah, cross we're very cross with cross each talk. other. Uh, very uh, welcome to our uh, uh, fiery debate, Tom. Uh, what would you like to say? <laughs> Quite a great debate. Yeah, I'm afraid, Kevin, I think you're really, you're really over the top on this. I'm with Alex and with Graham, you've just had on. I mean, I read Suella Ravelman's article and I was outraged. I mean, she didn't give a shred of evidence. And look, Kevin, when have you started believing politicians who are in trouble when their party's been in for 14 years and have completely failed to deal with the issue? Come on. How do you square then, uh, uh, Tom? How do you square uh, at Welby's speeches, uh, his various statements uh, on the awfulness of Rwanda, uh, the morality I, or the I, lack I, of morality, the government's I, I approach to migration, I, and I, the way that I, clearly the Church I, of England I, is letting a lot of people convert to Christianity to help their asylum applications? There's some kind I, of connection I, there, isn't there? I am a proud nonconformist. I don't actually regard Welby as anything particular. But look, let me just tell you a very simple fact you might not know. But since about 1970, in Iran, Muslim Iran, incredibly strict, there have been hundreds of thousands of people becoming Christians. And in this country, because, of course, a lot of them end up in prison, all the pastors get arrested and executed and tortured, and an awful lot of them have come to this country. And there was a very, very strong Iranian Christian movement, church, in this country, um, because Muslims are converting. Converting now, maybe these forty people and the, the maybe whatever it is, maybe they are Iranians. Maybe they have had exposure to the gospel. Maybe they're here because actually they were facing dreadful persecution in their own country. 
And, of course, Iran isn't the only country where there's horrific persecution. I mean, we won't even go to North Korea or Afghanistan, which is just dreadful. So, you know, if people do come to this country, sometimes the conversion might be genuine. So, it's course, so they've all it's... seen the light. Truly, it's a miracle. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, conver <laughs> all conversion... Kevin, all conversion is a miracle. Oh, I yeah, OK, that, then. That's a simple fact, all right. You know, <laughs> people see the light. They're not. They're not miracles. Around. They're not miracles. <laughs> Converting someone to Christianity is not a miracle. It doesn't really uh, qualify, does it? That's your view. I happen to... Well, it's very much my view. It's nowhere it. near a miracle. Uh, when uh, uh, Abdullah Zidi was converted to Christianity, I'd say that wasn't a miracle. What do you think? I think... I just simply don't know. I suspect it wasn't genuine um, because of what he did. You know, if a genuine Christianity is marked out by repentance by sincerity, by desire to do the right thing, to behave properly, and quite clearly he didn't have that. So he may have gone through a, quotes religious, close quotes, conversion, but it certainly wasn't a Christian one. It was a Christian one. Well, well it was, technically. Uh, that was what was on his application for what asylum. John, what John is saying is he thinks that uh, Abdul Azidi, if he was a genuine Christian, wouldn't have then thrown a substance, a corrosive substance, all over someone. And well, I quite true, agree it, with that. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank Good to you talk. ever so much for calling. Really but that's true, isn't it, Tom? Uh, Tom, I've called you, Tom. That's uh, true, Peter, isn't it, that uh, no Christian is capable of doing anything bad? No, uh, Christians aren't perfect, they're just forgiven. Um, Christians do things that are wrong all the time. Abdul Azedi is accused of a very, very serious crime. He has been convicted of sex offences. Uh, Tom and Rugby is right in that people can, uh, of course, repent from those things. They can be very sincerely sorry. But it doesn't sound as if that has been the case in this yeah, case. It yeah. does seem that this is a flag of convenience for some people. Right. But if the system it's is there and it's open to abuse, ruse. people, a ruse that some people will do. Um, the church, I, I mean... Everything I was taught growing up at Rich Hill Methodist in Northern Ireland was that Jesus was an incredibly compassionate person who uh, went out of his way to hang out with the people and help the people who were uh, most maligned in society. So I'm sure there are many people who see the example of Jesus Christ, uh, you know, hang out with taxpayers, prostitutes and others, um, and essentially saying, you know, asylum seekers are perhaps in that range for some people in this country, and that's what they feel they want to do within their Christianity to help those people. And I'm sure they are well motivated. The fact is that the system is open to abuse. Right. There are people, of course, who are trying to game the system, and that's that's not right. Mm -hmm. And if they're telling lies, that is unchristian. On that, on that, I think the thing that struck me by what Suella Bavman and Priti Patel said is both of us as Home Secretaries saw that people were gaming the system. Yeah. Now, this is where I would say, well, surely as Home Secretary, it is your duty mm -hmm. to make sure you send a message to either churches, I don't know how it'd work internally, or you look into whether you need to uh, change legislation somehow, add elements to legislation to say you cannot any longer say, well, I've since become a Christian well, if you look as at a fact, reason for remaining. If you look at the level of evidence that is needed to display that you know, you're a Christian. Are there records of you going to church for right. perhaps a year? I mean, I have a friend who is from Lebanon, who lives in the United States, and when she was getting American citizenship, she had to show, you know, wedding albums, she had to show loads of photographs, loads of evidence of the fact that this wasn't a sham marriage, she genuinely was married to her American husband. But within this, I think the church issue is a big one, but there are two other, uh, other issues that are at least as important. One is the fact that he appealed three times, and we mm. don't know, and we need to find out whether the Home Office actually attended the, all those, uh, the, the third appeal because often the Home Office lawyers don't attend and they lose on by default. And secondly, the fact that he was using not just his Christianity or alleged Christianity, but also the fact he was a sex yeah. offender to stay in this country, to yeah. say, if I go home, Crazy. I will be persecuted for being a sex offender. System. That, to me, is a much bigger scandal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sex yeah. offenders get deported. Yeah. I think that should be the rule for now. Do we agree on yeah. that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs>